This is going to be how to kite every enemy as well as a couple notes on how to exploit certain ones, just because a lot of these mini bosses tend to be better off alive and powering a farm of some sort. The Varglet. Bait out the first swing, hit twice, dodge, and repeat until dead. This enemy spawns with hound waves after an amount of in-game days, and it spawns a finite amount of hounds. You can just outlast the hounds if you really wanted to, assuming that you are willing to work around the Varglet. Varglets themselves are rather fragile. You could kill them pretty easily with something like a handbat. Varglets aren't as desirable as Vargs, so just kill them. They're annoying to deal with, but if you're willing to just kill the hounds as they come, then they can be sources of gems in a pinch. The Varg. Bait out the first swing, swing three times, dodge, and repeat until dead. It has the same kiting pattern as a Varglet, but it is infinitely more useful. Vargs are very dangerous as they spawn an infinite amount of hounds if you don't deal with the main enemy itself. Because of how the AI for hounds works when a Varg is present, it's a perfectly valid strategy to create a bait pen and lure the hounds to it until they lose aggro on you. The hounds will target the meat in the bait pen rather than the walls or the player, but once the player hits the Varg itself, the hounds will aggro onto the player. From there, the player can then just de-aggro them and cause the hound to lose interest until it is safe enough to hit the Varg again. Vargs are amazing for this fact. Because they can spit out an infinite amount of hounds, it can lead to one of the most consistent ways farming blue and red gems in the form of fire and ice hounds. Varg farms aren't inherently character specific, but in my opinion, they are best done with the character Winona. Vargs will not despawn, so it's important to warn others in the server as to where they are, or just kill them immediately as they come. It's definitely worth at least considering making a Varg farm, just because of the amount of gems it could produce, but typically you're going to want multiple of these, so you're gonna have to be aware that you could get other things from the hunt. This is probably my favorite enemy in the game, just because as a Winona main, I can make adequate use of, uh, of its abilities, and it helps me in farming gems. So, be aware that it's not just an enemy that you have to kill, it's an enemy that you could easily exploit. Poison Birch Nut Tree. This is difficult to do damageless and time consuming if you do want to do it damageless, but it's still possible. Run up to the tree, dodge the root whip, chop until the birch nutters spawn, run away until you lose aggro, chop the tree as much as you can without getting hit by the tentacle and without the birch nutters spawning on you, and repeat until dead. It's hard to boil this down to a hit once dodge repeat type of formula because the poison birch nut tree is almost entirely reaction based. I'd recommend you burn down the tree if they're bothering you or just running something that can insta chop trees through it. If you can't instant knock it down or you don't have something like a glass axe or a pickaxe or are woody, then they can be very annoying and time consuming. The birch nut trees themselves are really easy to farm, and the poison birch nut trees are the same way if you choose to use berger or merms. Because they don't have health and are instead structure type of things, it's really easy to just run berger through a horde of them, making this a pretty effective living log farm if you do want to use berger for farming your wood. The poison birch nutters. Covering these because they're a part of the boss itself, birch nutters are small enemies that are spawned from the poison birch nut tree. They drop twigs and birch nuts, which makes them pretty nice to farm. They only have 50 health. If you hit them with a weapon that crosses the 50 damage threshold, then they instantly die. Otherwise, the kiting pattern is bait out the first swing, hit once, dodge, and repeat until dead. The timing for kiting these is very difficult just because their range is deceptive. You can still kite them if you bait out the swing, but if they spawn in hordes, it's almost impossible to kite them because of the fact that there are too many and because of the fact that their attack timer is very short. The Tree Guard. Bait out the first swing, hit four times, dodge, and repeat until dead. These can be pacified by planting pine cones near it with a percent chance per each pine cone planted. It's really simple, easy, and a forgiving kiting pattern. It's really good practice for learning the concept of kiting. So if you are in a trading room world, it's recommended that you use these guys to help you kite. Because of how essential it is to gather wood, you shouldn't let the threat of a tree guard deter you from gathering it. The chances of a tree guard spawning rises with the player's day count, so it's easier to find them later than earlier. In my opinion, these things are more intimidating than they are threatening. They're pretty easy to sync up and then kill individually, so I wouldn't really put too much worry into, oh, we're probably gonna spawn tree guards, because you can just kill them. It's not too difficult. The Yukis. This is unkiteable due to its long range and stunning projectile, but it's not impossible to do damage lists. It's highly recommended that you bring hired help to deal with the Yukis as being caught in its phlegm will render you immobile and just make you take a couple hits. So just hire pigs, have another player with you, or another enemy like Merms or Bunnymen. 
The strategy to killing this boss without ever taking any damage is you have to run into the Yukis while it's spitting its attack. So if you look at the b-roll footage right now, you land the hits that you can and as it's winding up for its spitting attack, you run into it so as to displace it so you just are out of range of the flint. This will take a bit of practice and it's rather frustrating to try to do, so I wouldn't recommend you try it without going into a creative world or something like that and practicing. Yukis isn't really worth going for if you're just trying for its drops, unless you intend on B-Flow taming, as its steel wool is only used for the brush, the war saddle, and a cosmetic pet. This mini boss is rather difficult to take on solo and is somewhat complicated in dealing with, which is why it made the list as a quote unquote mini boss. Lord of the Fruit Flies. Swing once to draw their aggro, dodge, hit twice, dodge, and repeat until dead. You can greed for three somewhat reliably, but if your goal is to do this damage list, going for the much safer two hits is advised. These will spawn fruit flies after an amount of time passes, and the Lord of the Fruit Flies himself only spawns after day 35 and onwards. Letting crops rot will lower this by 0.5 days. The Fruit Flies. These are stunlockable. They will prioritize making one of your plants unhappy rather than direct combat. They can spawn weeds and tilled plots, so if you are trying to farm weeds for whatever reason, then this is a way to do it. These things do tend to spawn in hordes, but honestly, I would just recommend getting something like a log suit and tanking them. Otherwise, follow the normal horde protocol of baiting out the swings of the first row and then getting hits in when you can. The Spider Queen. Hit once to draw aggro or bait out the initial swing. Dodge, hit three times, dodge, and repeat until dead. The kiting pattern for the Spider Queen changes as she spawns spiders. It's a good idea to deal with the spiders as they come by separating her from the spiders she spawns because she inherently is a lot slower than most of the spiders. Having a weapon that can quickly deal with spiders is recommended, so having a hand bat or a dark sword. It's very difficult to do this damage list without a speed boost due to her having the ability to spawn spider warriors. It's recommended that you handle Spider Queen in a group, that being you have pigmen's, merms, bunnymen's, or other players since it's very easy to get overwhelmed by her. The Spider Queen does leave behind a spider egg when she goes from a tier 3 nest to a Spider Queen, and if you kill the boss, she will drop spider eggs, meaning this is a very good way to duplicate spider eggs. The Spider Hat could also help with farming spiders, just because you can cause a spider civil war with them, so long as you have the Spider Hat on. The Eye of Terror. I'm counting this as a boss because it's pitifully low HP makes me feel comfortable including it on this list. Its kiting pattern is somewhat inconsistent due to it spawning additional enemies. If you're trying to dodge its swings, just make sure to react to the spin animation. The windup is very telegraphed and it makes it very easy to dodge. Once you see it do its windup, just run out of the way of whatever direction it's charging. On phase 2, it will do a stomp attack. That is also very telegraphed and you just have to run away from the eyeball itself. They're easy enough to deal with. With a group of players, its low HP is laughable. It will enter an enraged state in which, rather than dodging just one of its lunges, you have to dodge up to five. The amount of lunges varies as to whether or not it'll go for three or up to five, because the way it works is it will lunge if it can't spawn any eyeballs. If it can spawn eyeballs, it will stop, and then it will spawn the eyeballs. The eyeballs themselves are stationary when they spawn. They have 200 HP, so it's easy to handle them as they spawn, if you have a high enough damaging weapon. The Eye of Terror itself will despawn come daytime, but the eyeballs themselves will be left behind and they will eat meat and aggro onto the player. If you're dealing with them while they're not in their stationary mode, their kiting pattern is fade out the first swing, hit twice, dodge, repeat until dead. I do hope that this helped kind of organize things because I didn't want to include mini bosses in my previous video on how to deal with every enemy, just because I feel like these things are a bit more complicated and take a little bit more practice. I would recommend exploiting most of these more often than just killing them outright. So they're a bit different in that regard as well. The next video is just going to be going over every boss in general. So be on the lookout for that. I hope to have some pretty big plans for it, a little something a little special, but we'll see how that turns out. So until next time, bye bye